Hey, Mr. Anderson here, coming at you with a quick tutorial. Um, today, I I just wanted to think about numbers. Like, what is a number? Say I put number 800... And thirty two. What is that number? Well, first, eight hundredths. So that looks like this eight hundred, and it's plus. 30, 30, plus 2, so we see here that 832 is 800 three tens, and we know three tens, three tens, it would be 30, and then two ones, two one, which is two. Now let's put that eight over here, eight times one hundred. There's eight one hundredths, there's three tens and two ones. Now, what if we took this number and we multiplied it by 10? Well, you might know that trick that I know, Mr. Anderson. When you multiply something by 10, all you do is you add a zero at the end. In this case, this would bring the number 832 to 8,320. So, let's take a look at all this real quick. Okay. Okay, okay. Race and all that. <clears throat> we need to look at this again because now our number is different. <clears throat> now we have eight thousands. That's eight times one thousand. Eight thousand. So that's eight followed by three zeros. So 8,000. Plus, let's look at our cab here. Three, three hundredths. And so three hundredths is 300, you got it. Okay. I'm seeing the pattern here. And now tens, what do we got for tens? We have tens is two times ten, which is twenty. And we have zero ones. So zero times one would be zero. So we can almost ignore that number altogether. We'll put it here just so we know. So we have 8,300, 20, 10, two tens or 20, and zero ones. So our number is now 8,320.
Let's uh, go ahead and take a quick look at some of these examples here. So we'll kind of start here. The number is 394, and so we spread that out to 300 plus 90 plus 4. That's where we get that. 106. This one shows you a couple different ways. This is it's 100, 0 tens, and 6 ones. Or you could put it as 10 tens and 6 ones. Or 100 and 6 ones. Now, I know you're probably thinking, I know this, Mr. Anderson. And you're right, you probably do. This is a skill that will help us when we're moving those digits around. For example, in this problem, maned wolves are a threatened species. This is a maned wolf. Look at this weird looking thing. Look at those legs. Stuff of nightmares. <clears throat> maned wolves are a threatened species that live in South America. People estimate that there are about 24,000 of them living in the wild. So 24,000. Let's go ahead and stop there and head back to our seesaw. So 24,000 on our scale. Let's come back over here. So this extremely scary long knit, long legged dog known as a, a dahole is an endangered species that lives in Asia. People estimate there are 10 times as many maned wolves as daholes living in the world. Hmm. So this is a main wolf called the hole. And what, however many there are of this, so we can put that right here as a, a question mark. Let's see who these. All right. So question mark. We don't know how many there are. That's what we're trying to figure out. What do we do know? We know that there are 10 times as many maimed wolves as the holes. Weird long leg guys here. So these are how many the holes. We don't know how many they are, but we know if we multiply that number by 10, then we get to the number 24,000. that right, right there. So we have all the pieces we're working with here. We see this is how many the holes there are. The holes are this scary monster. And this number is the amount of regular maned wolves. So this guy plus all of his other scary friends. Check it out. We're going to take this number. we got to figure out what this question mark is. And so if we know that it's 10 times bigger, then we also know that the holes are 10 times fewer. 10 times fewer. 10 times fewer. What is that? What does that kind of sound like? 10 times fewer. Because what we're trying to do is recognize that these multi digit numbers, one place represents 10 times what it represents in the place to its right. So, for example, if you have 10 ones, you get a 10. If you have 10 tens, you get a 100. If you have 10 hundreds, you get a 1,000. 10 thousands, you get 10,000. 10, 10 thousands, you get a hundred thousand, and then ultimately 10 hundred thousands, that gets you a million. So the numbers to the left are 10,000 more, and the numbers to the right are 10 left. Okay, so the numbers to the left are 10. So the numbers. <laughs> so the numbers to the left are 10 times more than the numbers to the right. So that means the numbers to the right are 10 times less. So we can multiply by 10 if we want to get them bigger, 
or we can divide by 10 to get them smaller. And so since we're trying to get the number to be smaller, we're going to divide by a 10. Divide by 10. So now we kind of got to figure out our numbers here. And I know, uh, I know you're very clever and you're thinking, hey, I know 24,000 divided by 10. All I got to do is come in here with my super red pen and cross out this zero. And then my new answer is 2,400. Okay. And you know, you're not wrong. That is very successful in, in helping you in some cases, but not in all of them. For example, let's say it was twenty four thousand and one hmm now what are you gonna just are you gonna are you gonna cross out the one no you can't do that because then it's a different number hmm so the whole crossing out thing doesn't quite vibe it, it can be a helpful tool to get you to the answer in this case it certainly did we were certainly able to see that 24,000 sorry 10 divided by 24,000 would be 2,400 that from our 24,000 if we divide that by 10, we'll get 2,400. Then the line through the zero trick has worked. However, I want to take a look at it. What if it was a one? If it was a one, all of a sudden, we can't just cross out that zero. So what do we do? There's a couple ways to look at this. I'm going to show you two. So let's duplicate this page. Here's the first way. This way is reliable. Take that same red pen of justice you were going to use to cross out numbers and take each number and move it one fewer. So move 10,000 to the thousands place. Move 4,000 to the hundreds place. Zero hundreds to the tens place. Zero tens to the ones place. And then that one goes to the tenths place. So that means our number after having done after having done the division and dividing it by 10, our new number is 2400.1. So you see we moved each individual number and we were multiplying by 10 this time. So we just moved each number one time. Here's another way to look at it. So let's say the same thing. We're taking this by 10. What I like to think of is that, see the decimal point right here? That decimal point, that's almost the thing that's moving. And I can show you because I can move this whole template. So let's say we're, we're dividing by 10 over here. Uh-oh, Mr. Anderson, you put multiplication. Dividing by 10 over here. Then we can take this whole thing and move it down one space because we're just trying to find out what is 10 times fewer. What is 10 divided by? Or what is 24,000 divided by 10? We can take it and move the whole thing. And we move that decimal point one time. And now our number is 2400.1. Just like in the previous problem.
right here. Okay. So with all of that in mind, I just want to show you two more patterns that you can notice. So I want to erase all of this and we're going to take the same number here. Let's change it up just a little bit. Let's <clears throat> our number is 8,231.4. I'm going to duplicate this page so we can look at it twice. <clears throat> First, I'm going to take us through our regular run through to remember how we can move the digits. So we take our number, 8,231.4, and I want to find out what is 10 times bigger. So we're multiplying by 10. We're getting bigger, so that means we're going to be going up this way where the numbers get bigger <clears throat> and we're only finding out what 10 times more so 10 times more that would be that be in this next section so we can take each individual number here so we're making them bigger so here's the pattern moving the eight there two there three there one there and four there. And you can actually move it yourself here. And now you have your new number, which is bigger, and it's 82,314. Okay. All right. Let's take. Let's undo all of this, and let's take a look at the opposite. So now let's switch to green here, because we're doing something different. Before we were seeing how the number gets bigger, now I want to see this number get smaller. So when we're going smaller, we're going to find out what's 10 times fewer and we know anything 10 times fewer, the opposite of times is divide, division. So we'll take this number and we'll divide it. And we just want to find out 10. So divide it by 10. And so we can take our device here, our arrow, and we can point them right over here. Where are they going to go? Eight's going to go over here, two over here, three over here, one over here, four over here. There we go. Move it here. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. So it got smaller. Our new number became 823.14. Okay. Now, all of these numbers that we've been going through have been going up and down by 10 or fewer. What if we want to multiply by more than 10? In fact, what we're looking at is multiplying in increments of 10. So what if we wanted to know if we were multiplying it by more than 10? So let's say we took this same number, 8,231.4, and we took, let's switch to blue here, and we multiplied it so we're getting bigger times a thousand whoa whoa okay hold on times a thousand i know what you might be thinking oh well i remember we could just add three zeros behind and like we talked about last time that doesn't work all the time particularly in this one it doesn't work at all because if you add zeros behind here it does nothing. Zeros at the end in the decimal zone, in the tenths and hundredth zone, they're worthless. Worthless, worthless, worthless. They can, you can do nothing with them. So what we have to do is move the digits or move the decimal. Or 
Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so we're multiplying it by a thousand. So let's look at a thousand. What is a thousand? A thousand is right over here. So that means a thousand, one thousand is ten hundreds. Okay. So 1,000 is 10 hundreds. And we're remembering, well, 100 is 10 tens. Let me get connecting here. 10 tens. And now look at this little pattern we created here. I want to point out with some other color here. Look at this cool pattern. So when we were breaking down 1,000, kind of like we were doing all the way back here, and we were taking these numbers like 140, and we were breaking it into 14 tens or one hundredths, and then four tens, and then zero ones, taking that same concept, but we're taking it to this number 1,000. So 1,000 is 10 times 100 because 1,000 is 10 hundreds right over here. And then we take 100, which we see here, and 100 is 10 tens or 10 times 10. And now the cool thing is let's count this. So there's here's, here's a, oh, let's change color. Here is one 10 right here. And here is a second 10. And here's our third 10. So we have three tens. That means we're moving up three sets of spaces. Whoa, into the millions. Three, one, two, three. Do you see how it's bouncing off of each one? I'm going to start moving them so you can see. So it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then wait, Mr. Anderson, what about right here? There's nothing. There's nothing here. Well, let me tell you something. Do you know what nothing is in math? In math, when you're saying something is nothing, you're saying that bad boy is a zero. So throw some zeros in there. So we got a whole new number. So 8,231.4 times 1,000 is 8,231,400. What? That's crazy. Oh, we've been talking about this for a while, huh, fifth grade? Man, um, I think we may come to a conclusion here so we don't overwhelm you. And we're going to do a follow-up video on this. But if you have to, watch this video twice and really get comfortable with moving the numbers around. So like we did here, where we only had one. So we had one set of 10, so we moved one space. Here, we had three sets of 10, and we moved three spaces. Now, some of you may have noticed there was another pattern, because we moved three spaces, and there were three tens. Look at the number 1,000. Do you notice anything about it that might have three? Like, do you notice one, two, three zeros? I do too. So it looks like we moved three spaces and there were three tens and there were three zeros. Okay, uh, we're gonna pause it here. 
Um, Because we've absorbed a lot, I'm hoping. I'm knowing, because I know you guys are uh, hard workers and you're showing me so so far and we're going to work through this together. Um, But I want us to start thinking about moving the numbers. So what I'm going to do here is where this video is attached, I'm going to include a template here. And let's see, let's delete these. And let's come up with these problems together right now. I want you to solve just two of them. Um, and I want you to show me that you have picked up on how the numbers are moving. So here is our first challenge. So I will keep some spare zeros over here. Oh, I'll keep some spare zeros over here, but let's make a number. that we're going to practice on. So let's take 22,134. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 22,134 and we're going to divide that by 1,000. And then we're going to take that number. We're going to have 132.2 times 100. I'm going to add a blank page here and I want to, I'm going to write three trees here. I'm going to write, oh, yeah, fix that. I'm going to write 1,000 here. I'm going to write 100 here. And I'm going to write 10 here. So 10, 10 is easy peasy. 10 breaks down, 10 is 10 times 1. Done and done. We only move one space. Now, 100 is 10 times 10. Okay, so 10 times 10. And so there's one ten, two tens, one zero, two zero, two spaces. Really notice this pattern. This two, two, two. I think that's so important, especially over here, because we break down even further further. So 1,000 is 10 one hundredths. And as we know, one hundredths is 10 tens. And now we can take a different color here. And we're like, wait a second. Here's a 10. Here's a 10, here's a 10, so there are three tens. And then there are, oh, one, two, three, three zeros. And we move three spaces. I got a bonus challenge for you. Let's take the number 10,000. And we're going to break it down 
into ten somethings. And I'll give you a hint. You gotta come over here and look at this place value chart. Because ten ones is ten. Ten tens is a hundred. Ten hundreds is a thousand. And so on and so forth. So use that to break this ten thousand down the same way we broke down these three trees. I think if we focus on these concepts, it'll really help with us uh, to uh, get this situated. Holy moly, this whole video was almost a half hour. I'm sorry for making this so long. I just really wanted to cover a lot of information because um, uh, it's a big deal. And it, I can, I'm can. i going to try to make another video. We'll do another one tomorrow. Same, we'll just, we'll just keep doing these. And we can have multiple lessons like this until we really get a feel for it. Um, and I'm going to leave you with a fun fact. You're probably wondering, if you're like me, I'm a big wanderer. I wonder why 10? Why on place value? Why do we care so much that 10 ones make a 10 and then 10 tens make a hundred, 10 thousands make a thousand? Why is 10 so important? Take a second. Look down. Look down at your hands. Count your fingers. How many fingers do you have? You have 10. And you know who, we, who invented numbers, right? People. People invented numbers, and because we have 10 fingers, we love the number 10. We think 10's great. Isn't that funny? And what, you know, the reason why everything's in 10s is because we have 10 fingers. Um, fun fact, the more you know. Um, I appreciate you. If you made it to the end of this video, you're a trooper. Congratulations, because this was a long haul. And we're in this together, fifth grade. This first lesson... This whole first unit is tough. It really is, and um, it's and it's gonna be okay if you don't get it the first time, or the second time, or the third time. We'll keep trying, and we'll keep moving forward, and we'll try a different way. We'll try to understand. Um, all you gotta do is just try. That's all we ever do. All right, fifth grade. We will see you on the other side.